So, ladies and gentlemen, I want to talk again to the Tate fans and to the trads and to all those who've been bamboozled by the lie that the West is degenerate and Islam is the answer. I want to talk to you, those people. There's not many of them here, but I want to talk to them that appear on camera. So firstly, let's just talk about progressive culture. I want to say I totally agree with everybody who says that Western culture is degenerate. It is. It's addicted to alcohol. It's addicted to drugs. You know, the socialists separated the proletariat from the opium of the people being the Christian religion and the proletariat simply replaced religion with real opiates. Opium, cocaine, cannabis, alcohol is rampant through working class communities. Degeneracy in terms of sleeping around having multiple partners, having sex with multiple partners, gay marriage, gay adoption, transvestite ideology, all of it degenerate and backwards, a step back to the, the, the things that brought the Roman Empire to collapse in the fourth century. And the Diawagandists <laughs> have pulled a brilliant move. Okay, okay. And I applaud them for their intelligence. Okay, okay. And I say to you Christians, you need to play a better game of chess. Uh, okay. You need to box smarter than you are. Because you're being outplayed. Because they're saying that Islam is the answer to the degeneracy of the West. It's certainly one kind of answer. But I want to propose to you, ladies and gentlemen, that if you fall for that total rubbish, you're going to be, be, be replacing one kind of degeneracy with another. Why do I call Islam degenerate? Let me give you some examples. Islam is degenerate because it teaches adult breastfeeding. <laughs> No word of a lie. I was shocked when I read this myself. In the Islamic custom, yeah. the Islamic tradition, yeah. if you're outside of someone's family yeah. and you want to be adopted inside that family so that you can be seen by the women as halal rather than haram, okay. what do you, have to do? you have to suckle the breasts <laughs> of the mother of the family. And if you suckle and the Muslim says, we're jealous. we're jealous. No, we're not. That's degenerate. It's as degenerate as going to a nightclub and chatting up some slut in a short skirt and taking her to bed for the night. It's just as degenerate. But that's what Islam teaches. There's nothing like that in Christianity. Nothing. Nothing like that in Christianity. You adopt someone because you love them and that is enough to include them in your family. Incidentally, Muslims don't even have a concept of adoption. Which is because Muhammad wanted to marry the wife of his adopted son. So he abolished adoption to make it legal for him to pursue his fancy of his adopted son's wife. That's degenerate, ladies and gentlemen. We're not answering the degeneracy of the West. We would be replacing it with another one. Another example of degeneracy within Islam. Islam permits child marriage. And when I say child, Ladies and gentlemen, I mean six-year-olds are supposedly able 
to consent to marriage in Islam. Wow. Ladies and gentlemen, yeah. that is degenerate. Yes, it is. That is backward. Right. That is as bad as allowing transvestites into schools to groom children. Mohammed married a six-year-old. He had sex with her when she was nine years old. What? Nine. That is what the Hadith say. The Muslims are offended by their own prophet because they don't, they're scandalized by their own prophet's behavior. So they have to lie to cover up what the Hadith say. But Sahih al-Bukhari is clear. Aisha was six when she consented to marriage and nine when she had sex. That is degenerate like letting transvestites in schools to groom children. Christianity has no such concept. The Christian faith allows our ethical and moral practice to be informed by the best learning. And so Christians and Christian civilizations and incidentally the entire world is raising consistently the age of consent. It's going up around the world because all the science shows that children are too young to engage in sexual practices at six and nine, which is incidentally the ages that we are allowing transvestite child groomers to sexualize children in our liberal progressive society. Something many Christians have opposed and are opposing and are going to the courts fighting about. But Muslims agree with child marriage. So we are not answering the degeneracy of the West with Islam. We are replacing it with a different kind of degeneracy. Next. Islam permits the raping of female captives. Wow, I don't believe that, that is degenerate. Disgusting. We have on record yeah. on Soko films All right. multiple Muslims in this park yeah. defending the practice of slavery yeah. and trying to call what is clearly rape marriage. marriage. <laughs> Ladies and gentlemen, yeah. Islam permits the capturing of sexual slaves yeah. and their rape. Safia yeah. was a captured female slave who was traded amongst the Muslims okay. and ended up in the possession of Muhammad. Ah. Muhammad had sex with her within the week of her capture. Within the what? The week wow. of her capture. A woman who had just seen her father, her uncles, her brothers, and her husband murdered. Murdered. Do you honestly think a woman who is mourning the death of her entire family will suddenly want to have sex with the man that led to that murder? No way. No. No, no, no. She was raped. Okay, yeah. And the Muslim community testifies yeah. that because her entire family was murdered, yeah. her Muslim stood guard outside of the tent okay. on the prenuptial on the nuptial night okay. with a sword wow. to ensure Muhammad's safety. Wow. Because that's how in love she was with him. <laughs> he needed a bodyguard wow. to make sure that she didn't try to hurt him. That, ladies and gentlemen, is not the answer to Western degeneracy. That is just degenerate and backwards. Right. Christians yeah. have abolished the slave trade around the world. Let's be clear. Yeah. When are those liberal progressives in the BLM movement 
going to campaign to have a statue dedicated to all of those white male Christians who fought and died to suppress the slave trade around the world in the Royal Navy. 2,000 Royal Navy sailors died fighting to end the slave trade along with the French Navy and the American Navy at a time when these countries were dominated by Christians. And where did we suppress the slave trade? Where, Bob? The Barbary pirates who were Muslims in North Africa. Wow. The Ottomans yes. and their slave trade. Okay. The slave trade of the Mughal Empire in India. Right. The Portuguese slave trade. The Spanish slave trade. Right. All of it was abolished by Christians. Exactly. But Islam yes. permits slavery. Ooh. That isn't the answer to Western degeneracy. No, no that way. is degenerate. Correct. Ladies and gentlemen, yeah. we hear about how the West has to destroy the patriarchy because of its abuses of women. And yet the Christian faith 2,000 years ago established that women were people in their own right, yeah. having the same honour as men, being made in the image of God. When Paul wrote in his letter to the Galatians, there is neither man nor woman, that all are one in Jesus Christ. Amen. There has been a problem of female abuse in marriage in the Christian world. It has been a Christian problem. I do not deny it. But show me the verse in the Bible that says that a husband can beat his wife. I challenge you. You can't. Because it's not there. What does the Bible say? Love your wife as you love your own body. Is what it says. Love your wife as Christ loves the church. Amen. Honour one another. Submit to one another. These are the teachings of the Bible. That is the answer to the feminist degeneracy that we have in the West and the toxic masculinity that we have also had in the West that seeks to justify the abuse and oppression of women. But what does Islam teach? Islam teaches that if you suspect, let that word ring in your ears, suspicion alone is sufficient. Not proof, not guilt. If you suspect your wife of disobedience, what do you do? What should you do? According to the Quran, first, you admonish them. You say, you naughty wife, look what you've done. I have suspected you of wrongdoing and now I'm telling you off. Okay, okay. Then you banish them from the bed, is what the Quran says next. So you emotionally abuse your wife. You make her sleep on the couch. But in the European world, because of our chivalry, even if the wife is the one in the wrong, the husband goes and sleeps on the couch. And there's many Western married couples that would admit to that. Even when the husband thinks he's right, he still goes and sleeps on the couch. Because we have a code of chivalry given to us in Christianity that says that women should be honoured and protected. But what's the third punishment that the Quran gives? On suspicion alone. Admonish them, banish them from the bed, and then strike them, is what the Quran says. The Arabic should be translated as strike. Like you strike a volleyball. There are hadiths that say 
that you should not strike your wife like you strike your slaves because you might sleep with her that night. So the Quran permits the beating of slaves and it compares the punishment of wives to the punishment of slaves. No wonder Muhammad said that your women are like fields, plow them, that the majority of those in hell are women because they are deficient in their intelligence. Islam is not the answer to Western degeneracy. Christianity is. The next example of Western degeneracy is abortion. Since abortion was permitted by the progressives, we have killed 90 million of our own children in the West. Trads, conservatives, Republicans, you rage against immigration, but you won't abolish abortion. And you should abolish abortion. It's because we've killed 90 million of our own children that we have to find 90 million in population. Ladies and gentlemen, the murder of the innocent is a crime is a crime. Christianity believes that life begins at conception, no exceptions, and all children are innocent, and all children should be protected as the weaker party. Now, what does Islam teach in answer to the degeneracy of the West? Does it say we should abolish abortion? No. Islam doesn't even know when life begins. Some Muslims think that life begins after the 40th day of conception. Some Muslims think at the 120th day of conception. But Muslims, in Surah 5, Ayah 3, does it not say in your Quran that on this day I have perfected your religion for you, completed my blessings for you, and chosen for you the religion of Islam? And don't your task fears of Ibn Kathir okay. amongst others yeah. state that this verse yeah. is in reference to the completion of deciding that which is haram and that which is halal you are yes, yes. and yet you cannot tell me yeah. with any consistency when life begins wow. and so those Muslims who believe yeah. that abortion be, is illegal haram is after 40 days yeah. or saying that those Muslims who permit it up to 120 days yeah. are committing murder. You're committing murder. How can the perfect guidance not manage to tell you when you're killing an innocent soul? Oh. Ladies and gentlemen, yeah. Christianity does not have that problem. Is every sperm sacred? I'll answer questions after my final point. Final point. Finish yourself. Final point. Final point, Bob Sila. The West is degenerate yeah. Thank you. since the 1960s and the backward step of the sexual revolution. Tell us about sex, Bob. We have sexualized our culture and we have objectified sex as an experience to enjoy. We have dehumanized women and we have allowed the dehumanization of marriage 
to something like farm animals. Ladies and gentlemen, we're behaving no better than chimpanzees. But, ladies and gentlemen, what is the Islamic answer to Western degeneracy? It's polygamous marriage and sex slaves. You can have four wives in Islam. Four! But women can't have four husbands. And a man can have sex slaves as many as his right hands possess. And muta marriages, temporary marriages, which is simply the formalization of Mr. prostitution. Speaker, your vet has Ladies and gentlemen, hands to yourself, please. Hands to yourself. Hands to yourself. Thank you. Hands to yourself. Hands to yourself. Hands to yourself. Hands to yourself. Ladies and gentlemen, Islam is not the answer to the degeneracy of the West. Christianity is the answer to the degeneracy of the West. Because Christianity teaches one man, one woman in love, in a chaste love, vowed to preserve that marriage to the create stable families for the basis of a stable society. The West is fraying and dying because of the sexual revolution. And the women of the Muslim world are suffering because of the toxic values of Sharia law. Christianity is the answer to the degeneracy of Islam on one hand and the degeneracy of the progressive West on the other. There is a third way, a better way for all of you trads, for all of you conservatives, for all of you Tate fans. Don't believe the lie of the Dawagandists. There is a better way. The Christian faith as practiced by our ancestors is the there, path that we should follow. Not that limp-wristed, <laughs> soy boy way of doing things practiced by the Archbishop of Canterbury yeah. and the wet, limp-wristed bishops of the Church of England. So, ladies and gentlemen, yeah. Final point. Final point. I need to take questions. If you have a problem with what I say and you think that the degeneracy of Islam is the answer, I want to say it's not the West that's degenerate, it's you that's degenerate. There is a better way. His name is Jesus Christ. Any questions? Any questions? Any questions? Any questions going once? Any questions on the topic of. Questions going once? Sold to no bidders at all. There's no questions. No questions. Go on. So the question is Is it okay to own people as property? Christians of the New Covenant follow the teachings of our Lord Jesus Christ who said, I have come to set the captives free. He's quoting the prophet Isaiah who is prophesying about uh, the coming of the Messiah. The captives that he is talking about are slaves. Christ said, I have come to set the slaves free. free. That's, right. That's what Jesus said. Amen. And that is why for 2,000 years yeah. you can find that Christians oppose the slave trade, abolish the slave trade multiple times. We abolished the slave trade in England in 1066 at a time when the Islamic slave trade was rampant. 
We abolished the slave trade across Christian Europe and it was reintroduced by Muslims in Portugal and Spain for 700 years and that is how slavery re-emerged in the European continent. Any other questions, ladies and gentlemen? Any questions? Questions going once. Any questions? Any questions? You just feed, JC, don't put it. Yeah. Bro, bro, you're just feeding the troll. He's just doing it because we're putting the camera on him. Yeah. Any other questions, ladies and gentlemen? They believe in miracles. Before I go on to my next topic, last call. Any other questions? Who's got a question? You destroyed the world. You made slavery. You, question or not? you killed people. Okay. You took the land. And you, you prostrated. Right, ladies and gentlemen. Yeah, Bob, no questions. Since there are no questions, yeah. I'm going to go on to another topic. I'm going to invite you to come this way. If you want to stay here and listen to him, stay here. If you want to listen to me, I'm going that way. Peace across, brother. Peace be with you, brother. Oh, yeah. Okay. So, ladies and gentlemen, I'm going to talk about my next topic. And my next topic, ladies and gentlemen, it's about the recent arrest of a Christian for praying silently outside of abortion clinic.